You know, I started out uh, as a software engineer a long, long, long time ago, and I wanted to build technologies that worked and were efficient and effective, but I also wanted some confidence that they would do something good in the world. You know, that whatever I made as an engineer would ultimately benefit um, society, human beings, other creatures on the planet. Design constraints are our friends. They, um, mm. they help us shape the kinds of new technologies we develop and their qualities and characteristics in ways that um, maybe we want to see. And so I think of design constraints as trying to bring together our moral imaginations and our technical imaginations. And that leads to really great engineering design. You know, so if I think about energy technologies, I want energy technologies that will give us lots of power, that will do so in a way that is consistent with how the rest of the biology and planet functions, and, um, and has limited risk in terms of generating um, waste or too much power. So if I give myself those design constraints, you know, as an engineer, as somebody who's developing new materials, I start looking at what kinds of sources for energy I might want to evolve. Like I look a lot at chlorophyll and I just think how remarkable is this? All these green things somehow manage to absorb energy that's out there from the sun, it's there, and then transform it into a way in which it can be used. That seems like a really great idea. And there isn't a lot of waste generated that lays around and is dangerous to us for thousands, if not tens of thousands of years. Well, technically there is a waste product. It's called oxygen. Oxygen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah about there that. you go. Yeah, that, that's, that's such a bad waste product for us. That's huh? the tree's waste product is, is oxygen, yeah. But that's the way that a design constraint that brings together our moral and technical imaginations can lead us in, I think, yeah, new and powerful directions.